I've finally watched my first Japanese Godzilla film and the whole world agrees that this is one of the best and I am now part of that crowd. Let's talk about Godzilla Minus One. Hi, my name's Drew and welcome to another review video on Flying Vina. Now, you might have heard about this film, there's a lot of buzz about it because it actually won this, uh, the, the visual effects Oscar at the last Oscars. Uh, I'll talk about that, I'll definitely talk about that a bit later. But uh, there was a lot of uh, rumours about what's going to happen with the film because I myself, I didn't manage to see it in cinemas I wanted to, didn't manage to. I was like, okay, fine, I'll get a Blu-ray, I'll get a home release. <laughs> and that has been in discussion since then, so I, I believe it's still not sure whether there is going to be a release, although with the success, I, I, I would wager that, yeah, they're definitely going to release it. But obviously Netflix has done a really brilliant thing. They've swooped in and they've they've obviously bought the rights for worldwide streaming of this film, which is a brilliant idea. Uh, I'll also talk about that a bit later <laughs> when it comes to the budget. Uh, yeah, so that is how I saw it. Netflix is now streaming it worldwide. If you have, are in a similar situation where you didn't manage to get to the cinemas, want to see it yourself, uh, yeah. If you've got Netflix, you should be able to see it now. Like I say, it's my understanding that it's streaming worldwide. Yeah, I was very excited. I heard a lot of great things about this film. And like I say, I've never seen a Japanese Godzilla film. They've never really piqued my interest that much, I must admit. Because I always thought, at least my impression of them was that they were rather goofy. Which, is my understanding, uh, also applies to quite a lot of them. I saw a breakdown. <laughs> One of my favourite channels that I follow for film stuff, uh, Dan Merle, he did a breakdown, <laughs> a ranking of all of the Godzilla films. And if you think there are only a few of them, are actually 37 in total. Godzilla Minus One is the 37th uh, Godzilla film. <laughs> so that is really fun and crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, so there you go. And yeah, so a lot of goofy ones there. This is definitely not one of the goofy ones, on the very contrary. So if you think that, that Godzilla films are just silly or just there for the action, etc., you really need to watch Godzilla Minus One. There are others there that I am interested in, among them the original Godzilla, because that is not supposed to be a funny film. Uh, and it's really old. I mean, it was made in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. And I also want to see Shin Godzilla, which is uh, the, the last one that came from Japan, which was in 2016. The film studio, in case you're wondering, uh, is Toho Studios, that's the Japanese studio. The American ones, you know, with Kong and, uh, you know, Godzilla x Kong, and Godzilla vs Kong and King of the Monsters, etc. Uh, they've all been made by legendary pictures and I enjoy them. I've done uh, reviews for Godzilla vs Kong and Godzilla x Kong New Empire on this channel. I'll leave a link to the last one at the end of this video. But yeah, this is a very different approach and I like both of them. Just to clarify that, this for me is not a one against the other. Uh, I enjoy both for different reasons, right? So anyway, that a bit of the background to this film and yeah, if you're not too sure about Godzilla as a franchise, you know, and who makes it, etc. So let's talk about the plot of this film. This film is set actually just after the Second World War. This is also uh, why uh, the title minus one, why that was chosen. I was confused about that, I researched it. It makes a lot of sense once you've read what it's about. The idea was, this is right after the, the Second World War. Did I just say First World War a few minutes ago? Second World War. Uh, and as you probably know, Japan was defeated there, uh, also morally really, uh, you know, really down low because uh, their whole society was changed because they realized, you know, that uh, most of them were just used as blind cannon fodder and kamikaze action and all these kind of things to blindly devote themselves to their emperor, etc, etc. And in swoops Godzilla. So basically what this title is referring to is, is, is Japan was, was reset, it was ready at zero basically and here comes Godzilla and he's sort of <laughs> taking the whole population even further, you know, making it even more miserable and desperate. But thus, you know, subtracting one, even taking it minus one, right? That's the one thing. They also refer to this film being set prior to the very first Godzilla film. I'm not quite sure which year that is supposed to be set in, but obviously not as early as this. So in that sense, it's also minus one. This is the earliest in history we've got a film, you know, with, with, with Godzilla set in it. Right? So that's what that title refers to. So this is uh, set in the Second World War. We are focused on a character called Koichi Shikshima. I'll say straight ahead. 
any of the mince pronunciations, please forgive me, I'm trying to do my best here, right? Uh, played by actor Ryonosuke Kamiki, and he is a kamikaze fighter, but he, he pretended that his plane had a defect in order to not have to sacrifice his own life towards the end of the war. Uh, so yeah, so he, he uh, emergency lands on an island where the plane gets looked at. Everyone's like, hey, wait a second, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. They kind of figure out, okay, this guy is, uh, you know, he's not fulfilling his duty. Uh, and Godzilla attack. So he's introduced to Godzilla at that point. Uh, you know, obviously very shaken by the entire experience. He goes home. Uh, I mean, he survives just briefly. This is the start of the film. So, uh, you know, it's a very brief spoiler, but yeah, he survives the encounter. He goes home to his family, to the well, family house to discover that his parents have been killed in bombings during the Second World War. Uh, he stumbles upon uh, a lady who is homeless. Uh, tries to help her. She has also lost people in this war and these bombings. Uh, her name is Noriko Uishi. She's played by Minami Hamabe. Again, apologies if <laughs> any of that is wrong. He takes her in, you know, because he obviously at that point is very low down. You know, they're both in the same situation, might as well help each other out. Uh, Noriko, she comes with a little child, but it's not actually hers. She's just found this orphan out there somewhere. Uh, so they, 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 basically the three of them are a family. They're not married, you know, and it's not their biological daughter, but basically the three of them become a family. The daughter, by the way, is, uh, is uh, her name is, is Akiko, and she is played by, say, Nagatani. I'll definitely talk about her as well in a bit. Yeah, uh, we see this. Uh, so, so they're coming together, they're gradually learning to, to become a family, you know, uh, get financially, finally he gets a job, clearing uh, water mines left from the Second World War. Dangerous job, but you know, it brings in good money. So the house, you know, so they, they start building their lives up again. And at certain intersections in the story, you've got Godzilla appearing. So that is that is the main gist of it, right? And uh, the problem is, or the, the ultimate big problem is, towards the end of the film, obviously the population, they want to get rid of Godzilla because he's a menace. Uh, there is in particular one scene where it really devastates a city and it's really brutal. <laughs> so yeah, they, <clears throat> sorry, they want to get rid of him, but the problem is the military can't really help them. Uh, it's explained that uh, that because of uh, um, f frictions between the US and uh, so the Soviets, you know, there's not really any aid coming from the outside, so they, they have to deal with it themselves. And that's the big problem they face. So they have to try and get rid of Godzilla somehow without a big military power supporting them in some way. And I won't tell you what they do, uh, what they try to do, you know, whether it works and what it is, etc. All I'll say is it's really cool, it's kind of scientific, and I thought that was really, yeah, cool. So what do I like about this film? Uh, first of all, you have to talk about the budget because many people do. It's got an estimated bu budget of 10 to 12 million dollars, which is absolutely r ludicrous. Nowadays, you don't get films like this. If you see the film and what it looks like and all the things that happen in the film, granted, they used some miniatures I personally didn't even notice. And then you have Godzilla coming in and it looks so good, especially for that price tag. I mean, fine, yes, the, the, the Godzilla, when he's doing stuff, he doesn't look as pristine as he does in the legendary films, but it only costs like less than 10% of those films. And that's just absolutely crazy. That is really, 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 really crazy. <laughs> You know, I, I, it's, I can't stress that enough. It looks amazing for that budget. You cannot believe it. When, when, when you watch the film and then you learn of the budget, you, you, you're just, it's, you know, my breath was taken. I was like, wow, that is really fascinating. So hats off to pulling that off. Yeah, I mean, that is really a stunning achievement in and of itself, but they managed to do uh, you know, the, the, the design of Godzilla, I'm kind of torn whether that's better or the legendary one. I don't know. Uh, he, it's funny because because of the low budget, he's not quite as agile, right? But that's fine because, like I say, again, what you're getting for this amount of money is breathtaking. Uh, but other than that, yeah, he, he has, he, it doesn't look quite so feral and, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, animalistic, you could say, like the legendary one does. But, but again, it's really good, especially when he powers up and uh, he gets ready to shoot off his, his heat beam, you know, that, uh, or uh, atomic beam, whatever you want to call it. That looks st really cool. I really enjoyed those scenes. <laughs> the build-up is amazing. That's the one thing. But what I really like about this is, uh, yeah, 
Godzilla is, is not used sparingly, not at all. You know, he appears uh, more often than I thought, you know, because of the budget, I thought he wouldn't appear. He appears a lot more than, he, than I expected, and he does a lot more than I expected. But the funny thing is, and I mentioned this in both of my legendaries reviews, for Godzilla vs Kong and Godzilla X Kong, they always try and make you feel for the humans, although they're really superficial and it's all very convenient, you know, <laughs> everything that happens to them and where they find themselves to be and all these things. This is a film where you actually care about humans. It's really crazy. So this family of three, you really, really care for them. You've got, you've got uh, Koichi who is really suffering under his post-traumatic stress disorder. This is me seeing it as, as, uh, as a lay person. I don't know what specifically he's got, but you know, I'm, I'm diagnosing him right now as a lay person with that. He's dealing with the stress and uh, everything that he <clears throat> witnessed in the Second World War. And of course, seeing Godzilla, that as well. He's got that, they're trying to build up the family. And you've got this, this, this little girl, uh, Akiko. And I really, could, I had to look it up. This girl is, a, the, the actress playing is only two years old. She's absolutely incredible. I don't know how they got to do it. She's got various scenes where she's crying and the whole thing feels natural. You know, it just fits in well and, and just how she acts and everything. It's really incredible how they got her to do that. And you feel for the whole family. I'll be honest, I got really emotional during some of the scenes because I've got a young daughter myself who's three years old. So I could emphasize with a lot of the things going on. And she really broke my heart in, in this film. So really stunning how they were able to do that with a two-year-old kid and everyone together. You know, the actors, really great. I only mentioned a few of them. Uh, one of them I will mention, <laughs> though, in addition is uh, Hidetaka Yoshioka. He plays a gentleman called Kenji Noda. He's a scientist because, of course, every Godzilla film needs one guy who knows what he's doing. And he swoops in. We don't know where he's got his knowledge from or whether he's basing it just on assumptions, you know, about the animal kingdom and certain behaviors, etc. But he comes in and tries to sort of figure out what Godzilla's doing, how they can combat him, and all these kind of things. But he's really great in it. He's got this mad scientist look. I really love just his, the look on his face when you see him. You're like, yeah, he's the mad scientist. But it's so good because he really, uh, you know, gets the people rallied together to fight Godzilla and that. Loved his performance as well. So the actors and the characters, you really feel for them. It's, it's crazy how they've got me watching a Godzilla film and I care about the people. <laughs> so, okay, you know, I've been taught, or legendary pictures, take note, you know, this is how you do it. This is how you can have both Godzilla and cool, massive, big action and destruction and stuff going on, but still have, it's just a family of three and their survival, but also the Japanese people dealing with the Second World War and then being sacrificed as lambs and fodder and all these kind of things. What are they gonna do? And it's just so well written, the whole thing. So yeah, music's there. You've got the classic Godzilla theme popping up as well, of course. The whole thing from start to finish, the direction, I, I enjoyed it so much. To think that the budget is just 10 to 12 million dollars, it is absolutely stunning. And you've got one person at the helm who is who's, uh, particularly to thank for all this. His, his name is Takashi Yamazaki. He not only directed it, but he also wrote it and he was even part of the VFX team. You know, so obviously a great leader when it comes to this film at the very least. So yeah, I hope they give him another Godzilla film to do because, you know, I want to see more like this. I enjoy, like I say, the legendary ones, but that's really popcorn stuff, you know, summer blockbustery stuff. This is really heartfelt and makes you think about a lot of things. It's, it's, it's really tense at times, you know, emotional. For me, it definitely was. Incredible film. Watch it if you've got the chance, definitely. That will be all from me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. It is the best way to support this channel according to YouTube. So please, that's why I'm asking for it. <laughs> Anything you want to see about this film or the Godzilla franchise as a whole, like I say, 37 odd films <laughs> and who knows how many other media things to go with that. Anything you want to say about them down in the comments below. Like I say, I'm going to try and see if I can watch Shin Godzilla because I heard a lot of good things about that as well. Anyway, anything you want to say down in the comments below. I'll thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one on Flying Vina. Take care. Bye.